In my last video, I spent a lot of time going through the physical equipment that I'd purchased and the various bits and pieces that make everything come together. Now I've actually been soldering for a little while using the jewelry method, which is higher temperature solders. And to be very honest with you, I've been struggling. Just to take you through some of the things that I purchased, I did get the boric cone, um, which you um, make um, the boric flux by grinding it in this plate, adding water, and then putting it on a piece. And I, was, I really struggled with that. Um, the soldering from a jewelry perspective, as I understand it, is really very simple. It needs to be clean. Um, the pieces that you're going to solder must not oxidize, otherwise um, the solder won't take. And you need a flux to encourage the solder to flow when it hits the right temperature. The other and perhaps most important is that the pieces must be tight against one another um, because soldering at this temperature with silver solder doesn't fill the gap. So that's why I use this little block here and I will actually use my soldering pick when the solder melts to push it up against the piece to make sure that they are tight against one another. The solder will flow between the two pieces. So if we had a space like that, the solder will only take on one side. So I went back down to Bruce Mute's um, jewelry shop and met a gentleman there called Kelvin, same name as me almost. And um, I find out that they make up their flux differently. They use boric acid, but they mix it in denatured alcohol or methylated spirits. To mix, it's very simple. You first put the amount of denatured alcohol into your mixing bowl. And then you add an equal amount of the boric acid. And you mix that till you get a nice dissolved solution. Again, just a quick reminder that when we are mixing chemicals of, of any sort, we really should put our apron on, make sure anything that spills, spills on us. And of course, just as an added precaution, in case anything spills in our face, um, just remember to put our safety, safety glasses on. Now you um, dip the piece in the solution and then I light it and burn off the denatured alcohol and what you get is a red residue of borax um, that's really covering the entire piece. We're using the easy solder so we've cut a few little strips and we're going to put them inside this little bin here The piece of solder is on, so we'll just get the torch going, add a little oxygen. They're suggesting I need a little yellow flame. And let's heat up the bottom of the unit first. And slowly bring the heat up until we see that piece of solder cover the entire piece. That's it. Now we're going to add the piece that we want to solder onto it. So our little emery board. And we clean that up. Uh, 
and that's it. This is the heater that I bought. Um, it's called Nubi. It's a baby's bottle warmer. And it's really nice and small and neat. Uh, has a little jar. Uh, it fits nicely down inside. I've got a small glass. I will be looking for a Pyrex glass this size. And I'm sure this one will eventually break. And there's a little cover that you put on it. And so just to bring it up to heat, uh, which takes a few minutes, and then we drop the piece in there and give it a good proper clean. Having acquired the borax cone, I thought I would take you through that as well. The first thing we'll do is make up some borax flux, putting some water down. And you'll see I've got a nice uh, fluxy paste, um, like liquid, um, like soft toothpaste. And we put it on the piece. All we need to do is get the gas going now and bring the piece up to to scratch we're sweat soldering it on and um, hopefully that will work out perfectly in the case of this particular gudgeon um, the solder didn't seal it properly the the silver solder um, doesn't fill gaps it just joins two pieces that are close to one another so I put I'm going to put some regular solder on it which won't melt the original join um, but does allow me to fill a gap if I need to and then I'll sand and clean that up. I'm using my regular flux which works great with um, normal um, very very low easy soldering and once I get the, the gap filled um, I cut off the extra uh, pieces and, and then I'll go and file and clean the whole piece up. Having soldered all these pieces, we now have to put in the gudgeons, we now have to drill the hole. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is make a starter hole. To get the center line, I've used the veneer caliper to mark the exact spot. And then I have a dentist drill that's going to put a very small indent uh, in the piece to prevent the drill from wandering. And thank goodness I have the Cameron drill press because that together with the XY table I got from um, Priak from Charlie Files is the most accurate way to, to drill these holes. So here we go. Now we're going to shape the gudgeon using the turbo carver.
And now we'll just take a temporary fit. And we're gonna have to sink, we have to open up these holes so that this goes in a little further so that the edge of the hole is right on the virtual edge of the stern post. And so now we'll just repeat this multiple times. And the first set of homemade jewels are on the model. Now these are just temporarily fitted on and um, roughly in the direction that they're supposed to be in. This one will have to be seated. Not sure how I'm going to get this one in. Um, probably just going to have to cut it short because you won't see it. Each one of these has to be seated in further. But um, they've pretty, come out, I think, pretty good. And I'm very happy with them. The thickness of the pintles is three inches. Um, when you look at the plan, the gudgeons look slightly less than that. Having said that, the actual gudgeon measurement of the HMS Janus was three and a quarter inches. So my feeling is once it's roughly three inches, that's fine. I'm going to take these down to three inches. And to do that, I've made up a little jig. And the jig holds the front and the center um, to make sure it's, it has some support as it goes through the sander. Now we cut them to the correct length. I want to take all the sharp edges off of them. And this one has nine holes. According to the drawing, the first hole is nine inches back, which is 0.18. So we can see the marks. And at the back, it's four inches. So now we just need to measure this. 1.1 and divide that by eight. Because there'll be eight spaces between the first and the back. So that means that's six inches between each one. And we have this very fine drill bit which we're gonna use. This is a drill bit for watch repair that I got. Um, it was very small, so I'm gonna use this as a starter hole and then open them up to take the pins afterwards. Also to make sure that um, the, the piece doesn't move or break, we'll put a piece of wood and measure the inside. In this case it's 0.25, so 12 inches, and we're going to um, cut a piece of wood exactly that size to support the inside.
and there's the first jewel all complete. We've put the fourth in and I just put the pin in here so you see it's traveling up and down in a straight line so all of the um, holes for the gudgeons line up perfectly neat against the stern post. Um, for now I've left out this top one. Um, I can stick a piece on, I certainly can't nail it on and if I do put the sock on it um, the little canvas bag that covers the rudder that prevents water from splashing up through the hole into the internal of the ship. This needs to come down just a little bit, about three or four inches. And again, it's telling me that I cannot cut these slots before this. We had to put the gudgeons in before we put the um, the pintles in because this one lines up this one might line up this one does not line up and of course this one lines up so they would have to match the rudder not turning free but certainly I'm getting the turning radius which I believe is 30 degrees as you can see, my jewels have been hung. I'm pretty happy with that. If I had to criticize it, the only thing that I would say is the, the um, bronze pins um, might be a little over, over scale. Um, those are the smallest ones I had. I suppose I could have made up uh, my own, um, but it works. And again, the process, just in, in hindsight, is we need to do the gudgeons first, then make the rudder to make sure that they all line up on the model. Because once these go on, I can't change it, and it would be almost impossible to figure out where they line up exactly on the rudder. So it's much better um, and easier to do the, to do the rudder after. So we'll see you in the next video when we make the final rudder and I may have a few more um, tips on my jewel making skills. Certainly soldering the brass I'm still struggling with. I don't seem to get the solder to flow every single time and I think that may be that I'm not um, heating up the brass pieces quickly enough and to high enough heat when I start off with.